to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, chapter 4, I meant to say, Ecclesiastes 4, from verse 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9 to 12. Let us now listen to the wisdom of the preacher. He says two are better than one. Why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. Next verse. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone. Woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Next verse. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? For if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Scriptures that talk about unity. It is important for us to understand that in division, in seditions, we will never be able to thrive and to advance as individuals, as families, and as a people. Even as a nation, as a continent, it will take unity. Now let me say something. Unity does not mean doing the same thing. Unity means motivated by the same goal. We will never be able to do the same thing, but that our motivations can be the same. There must be unity among the men and the women of God upon our land. There must be unity among the politicians and those who are in governance. There must be unity among our elder statesmen and veterans. There must be unity even among... Um, a traditional council and so on and so forth there must be unity among clans and families in our unity is our strength now it is easy and very cheap to talk about unity but I submit to you that unity is hard work and that unity does not happen arbitrarily there are principles that if violated will never produce a united people this is where i plead that you lend me your undivided attention because it is not enough to plead the case of unity upon our land it is important for us to understand the principles that we must keep i have studied the subject of unity as a leader as a man of god as one who has seen the benefit of being united and i found out that many people talk about unity without talking about the principles that must be kept unity is a reaction something must be done to equal unity just to say we should be united is not enough there are principles that if violated will continue to spell division but if honored and kept then we have signed the path for unity please follow carefully as i show you by scripture three or four keys that I have found from scripture that will be responsible for the unity of individuals, of families, of territories, and even of our land. Are you ready? Number one, the first key that is responsible for unity in our land and in our lives is love. There can never be unity until there is love. In John chapter 13 and verse 35, John chapter 13 and verse 35, Jesus himself was speaking and he began to charge us 
on the course of love and here's what he said by this shall all men how many men all men know that ye are my disciples not when you preach well not when you heal the sick not when you acquire degrees not when you rise to the zenith of your profession by this singular act shall all men know that you are my disciples he says if ye have love to one another i have studied a bit about love and god bless my parents for giving me the name that means the way to love what a powerful name i appreciate and i honor that name every day the more i transit the more i grow in leadership i appreciate the power of that name hallelujah love i have found out that true love does not have a reason the moment you have a reason for loving it is not true love genuine love does not have a reason in fact having read books by men of god philosophers and having listened to intellectuals and studied their materials and dissertations around and across the subject of love i came to a conclusion that i would need to formulate a definition of love for me here is my definition of love the absence of self that for me has proven to be the most potent scripture-based definition of love and this i drew from the very sacrifice of jesus christ the real definition of love is the absence of self that means you can measure how much the love of jesus and how much love is at work in you to the degree to which self is absent and the moment there is self you can literally use the index of self to measure how much love you have when it becomes about me when it becomes about myself what is in need for me what will i gain what name will i make there is no love in it genuine love does not see it as a thing of embarrassment to sacrifice self for the larger good of others the first key to unity therefore is that we must embrace this definition of love there is only so much I can do if it will benefit me alone. Do you know, psychologists tell us that there are six indices that measure fulfillment. And one of them is contribution. The degree to which your life is adding value to people will bring you fulfillment as a person. Everything God gave man only finds joy when it serves a cause larger than itself we farm here where a people who are skilled in farming i want you to please help me answer this question how many of you have seen a maize plant eating itself how many of you have seen an orange tree eating its fruit how many of you have seen any plant at all when you go to the farm and plant when it grows the joy of that plant is to see that it is able to make its contribution love look at the labor that the mango tree the orange tree the purple tree goes through there are trees that will spend years we have trees that are decades old upon our land and year after year they continue to produce some of them 30 years some of them 50 years and none of them have tasted of their fruit themselves and yet they are content that we continue to take from them love is the absence of self the moment it becomes about me apostle about me then we never will be able to truly walk in love we must learn to look beyond ourselves and look beyond the momentary and the temporary comfort we must be guided by number one the fear of the lord two conscience three a sense of posterity great leaders are guided by these three principal convictions the fear of the lord conscience 
and then a sense of posterity. The first key to promoting unity in the Tarok land is to promote love. And it is everyone's business. I must be able to love beyond the walls of partisan divides, beyond the walls of religion, beyond all kinds of prejudices. It is important for us to embrace love. Everybody, please shout love. One more time, say love. Number two, very quickly. Now, this is very, very important. The second key that is responsible for unity across any life, any family, any institution, and largely our land, is mutual honor. Please write it down and listen very carefully. Mutual honor. This has been neglected. Nations have gone to war because of the absence of mutual honor. Families have gone to war because of the absence of mutual honor. What is honor? Let me define honor. Honor is the discerning, the celebrating, and if need be, the rewarding of an individual as touching their difference, as touching their sacrifices, and as touching their proficiency. I will come again. That honor is the discerning. Honor is the celebrating. And honor is the rewarding of men, systems, institutions for their difference, for their contribution. It is difficult, very, very difficult to find this unity in an environment where all the parties involved make it as a covenant to honor the sacrifices of one another. Now, please look up. Let me say this. This is a plague in Africa. Respectfully speaking, this is a plague in Nigeria. We downplay the sacrifices of many. You cannot downplay the sacrifice of another, the contribution of another, and expect unity. No. When I came into this land, I was, I was so greatly honored and appreciated and I was humbled by the honor I received from fathers, from great people within this land. And it will only be wise for me to reciprocate that honor. The moment you are shown honor, you must find a way of reciprocating it. Reciprocating it. Honor can never be complete being one-sided. Parents, honor your children. Children, honor parents. Leaders, honor subjects. Subjects, honor leaders. Intellectuals, honor those you think are illiterate. And those who are illiterate, honor those who have paid the price to gain knowledge. Listen, we must be discerning over the sacrifices of many. Yesterday when I came and I sat there, I saw this great man, Dr. Panam, and as he was ministering, I was looking at him. And many people, I know that we know as a state, the great contribution that this man has made to the worship ministry, here on the plateau, and even in this nation, and across. The question is, do you recognize and discern it enough to honor it? There are ministers of the gospel within this land that have been dishonored. There are veterans across different divides in this land that have been dishonored. Listen to me. If we want to see honor, we must, we must be able to, we want to see unity, we must make our honor mutual. That if you honor me as a man of God, then I must honor you as your son and I must honor you as my parents too. That even though I am a man of God, I am still a son of the soil and I must be able to let the world know that we are not, we are not orphans and we are not bastards. And so I must show that honor. Is that true? No matter what we become, no matter where God takes us, it is important for us to know that when honor is mutual, then you have created the bridge for unity. 
as a leader i am very vocal to honor my people you know um as a ministry we're on break now i decided to give my people break because it's usually a very tasking year for us as a ministry and i just decided to give them a break so they go and spend time with their children their families as we prepare for a, a very busy year coming and i intended to come for this crusade not to bother them that's why we just set up we said we'll come here and meet whatever team we can find here and make do with what whatever it is that we find here only for me to arrive this land and i saw my people they refused to go home by themselves they came i was looking at them and i was almost saying what in the world are you doing here honor now they have come here because they honor me as their man of god and they they constrain their time to be resting they now sacrifice their time to be here i will be a stupid man of god if i stand and i brag and i say that's right you are I, you can see no i must reciprocate that honor even though they are my people and they honor me i must also tell them thank you for that sacrifice when honor becomes mutual then there must be unity Are we learning? A dear precious friend and brother, I was flattered when I saw him. He pastors the House on the Rock Church in Jos, Reverend Akila and his dear wife. And I only got word that he was on his way coming to this place. He's not a Tarok man. And yet on hearing that there was a crusade here, an apostle was in his place here, he left everything and came with his wife and he's been here since yesterday and he's here seated now that is honor and i must be able to reciprocate that honor to him and tell him thank you and this is what i'm saying now thank you sir you and your dear wife for that sacrifice and that discernment there are many many people here who have laid down their personal comfort and everything to do my wonderful instrumentalists here some of them flew down from lagos I, I told them to go and rest i mean they had gone for the year only for me to find out that they were on their way coming here and i said my god what are you what are you people doing and you drive them and send them back they will not go they will stay till the end of this crusade never take people for granted when they are loyal to you and they love you sincerely men of god hear this Go back to your church on Sunday and before you preach, tell your members, thank you. Don't say I'm a man of God. If you like, leave my church. You talk like that, your church will be empty. Tell them thank you. We must be unashamed to communicate the contribution of men. In this place, my face is the face that you see preaching. But there are people setting up this sound. There are security people up and down. Some of these people have labored day and night. When we are sleeping, they are awake to ensure that we are safe, not just the facility, even my own personal security. You see them running up and down. Some of these people are people at the highest level in the army. They shouldn't be doing what they are doing. But for the sake of Jesus and for the honor they have for me, even though high-ranking people in the military, they decided to submit themselves to run around as though they just got into the army. That is honor. I must tell them thank you. Is someone learning now? You are going to look at the person by your left and right and tell him thank you for the gift of you in my life. Whether you know him or not, are you ready? Say it in Tarok, say it in Hausa, say it in whatever language. One, to go. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. If it's your wife, tell her thank you. Don't say I've married you, I paid your dowry. Say thank you. Go ahead. We are not stopping. Say thank you. Say thank you to another person. And now together, let's say thank you, Jesus. To honor the one who has so honored us in this crusade. naira give him 100 naira because he's doing more than what i'm doing are we learning tonight 
children, go back home this night, not tomorrow, and go and meet your father and say, Baba and Dengchi. He will say, for what? Tell him, I returned from a crusade with a new orientation for the Tarot nation. That in gratitude and honor lies our unity. Husbands, honor your wives. Don't say, I married you. Cook for me. I paid your dowry in the presence of your parents. Mm -mm. Wives, say thank you to your husbands. When God gives you a responsible man who is not an armed robber, say thank you. Parents, tell your children thank you. When they bring a good result, don't look at them and say, what do you think I paid your school fees for? Tell them I'm proud of you. God bless you and thank you. You hardly criticize anybody you honor. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I honor you. Now you use that and you will see how many doors will be open. There are some of you seated here. Some of our great fathers and great veterans have helped you. They've done things because of them you went to school. Because of them you got married. Because of them you got a job. You have never found a need to go back and honor them. An entitlement mentality. After all, he's my uncle. Go back this night or tomorrow. Find a gift and go and tell them, Uncle, I've sinned against you. Ten years ago, you sent me to the university. Now I am a doctor or professor and I have not come to tell you thank you. I'm going down my knees to say now I have learned my lesson. Yafemi, I am sorry. Let me tell you the reason why many blessed people find it hard to support people because of ingratitude and dishonor. If I give you 10 naira and you do not appreciate it and come back to me, I will send you away. Can I tell you this? When you practice gratitude and honor, you create the bridge for assistance again the next time. In fact, in the presence of honor, you don't need to make a request again. Your honor itself will open you up to another door. Please do not trivialize anyone. Any day and anywhere you go, and whether it is the young, the old, the person you despise today may be the person to feed you tomorrow. Honor all men. Do not despise our kings. Do not despise the politicians. Do not despise the fathers. Do not despise the young people. I know some of them may not be behaving well. Some of them may be behaving stubborn. In as much as we desire them to improve, we must let them know that we honor them. Number three. What is the third key that sponsors unity? The third key is called forbearance. Mm. Forbearance. Forbearance is more than forgiveness. Please look up. For as long as you are human, from the start of your life until the end of your days, somebody must offend you and you must offend someone. No matter how anointed, no matter how holy, no matter how careful, somebody must offend you and you must offend someone. All men are men. The best and the greatest of us, we are still men. When you have that at the back of your mind, it becomes the sponsor for forgiveness and for forbearance. I will tell you the difference shortly. When Jesus was leading us to pray, here is what he said. He said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive theirs, those that trespass against us. For as long as you are living in the midst of people, you will find yourself offending someone. And someone will find themselves offending you, especially if you are a leader. Ask every leader here under the sound of my voice. 24 hours is too long until someone offends you. Whether as a preacher, whether as a politician, whether as a royal father, whether as an elder statesman, whether as a mother, a father, Spouses will offend themselves. Parents and children, family members, business people, politicians, royal fathers, all men. There is nobody here under the sound of my voice 
who has not offended someone in his life and there is nobody under the sound of my voice who has not been offended forgiveness is very powerful forgiveness is the highest form of giving you can give cars you can give houses but forgiveness is a kind of giving it is a painful kind of giving that's why it means a lot to the Lord when you forgive you have shown the excellency of your wisdom and the excellency of your maturity now let me define forgiveness forbearance and contrast them very quickly forgiveness is the fortitude and the strength the emotional strength to be able to let go and to provide pardon over someone who has offended you it takes strength emotional strength it takes maturity it takes wisdom it takes thoughtfulness to forgive but now let me tell you about forbearance this is the harder part forbearance is not just forgiving forbearance means creating a system of accommodation for that weakness because it will happen again and again and again hallelujah I remember a man who told me that he had a problem with his wife and I said why he said the woman talks too much and so when I sat down with them I said madam here's what your husband is saying what he's saying what do we do about this now and the woman knelt down and said I'm sorry and the man said I forgive you I said stop you are making a mistake you don't need to forgive her she will talk again what you need is forbearance forbearance means create a permanent system of accommodating that weakness there are many people you don't need to forgive you need to create forbearance is someone learning this tonight forgiveness can be as a result of a mistake that happened once forbearance is creating a permanent system of accommodation a talkative will always be a talkative a quiet person will always be a woman will always be say amen a man will always be a child will always be a father will always be an elder will always be children do not expect elders to be children they are old they have an advantage of wisdom elders do not expect children to be elders they are children give them time to grow allow life to teach them the lessons it taught you so that they will grow forbearance a politician will always be forbearance a man of god will always be an academician will always be are we learning we must learn to forbear more than forgive forgiveness is important but we must learn to forbear there are people there is nothing you can do about they are just the way they are if that person is your husband forbear your wife forbear your son forbear do you know that elijah was a temperous man have you read your bible do you know that elijah was a temperous man how do you think elisha followed elijah until he received his mantle don't blame the sons of the prophet for being angry their leader was a hard man and they said go to heaven go wherever you are going and give us peace but elisha said i will follow elisha you are stupid yes sir i'm still following i know what i'm looking for and at the end of it can i tell you some of the most discomforting people in your life are the ones that carry the graces you need you must learn to endure mama may be shouting at you every time but she has an anointing the day she prays for you she will open up your life forbear the shouting and be discerning until you receive the grace we live in a world where 
people expect godlike perfection from men stop wasting your time it will not happen pastor came out kena hoshine what is the meaning of that he's a man he's just that he's of god now of course this is not to endorse lack of growth we must keep growing but things can happen your bible says jesus was hungry jesus was hungry he went to a tree and the tree refused to give him food you thought he would say i am savior i show love three i will come back the bible says he cursed that tree jesus went to the temple and found people buying and selling you thought he would go as a polite civil citizen and report to the roman government he went out as if he was strolling and took a whip and returned back your jesus the best of any man is a man you must learn to forbear you must learn to forgive some of you when you go back home this night it's time to call your wife your husband your sister your brother whoever and say i love you god bless you the tarot nation here we come here we go forward ever backward never Are we learning in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God love mutual honor forbearance forbearance do you know as a man of God I don't I don't switch off my phone my phone is always on on silent I respond to an average of 600 to 800 text messages per day because of people calling from all over the world and sometimes I will read one text and here's what the text says Apostle you are a great man we love you thank you for changing us and I say God bless you and just while I'm about to start smiling I read another text Apostle you must be a wicked man I've been calling you and you are not picking I used to know you years ago you are not like that you have become proud now <laughs> then I read another one who do you think you are you are not God I'm calling you and you are not picking I want you to pray for me there's an emergency you are not God now listen if I choose to be angry and I call him I say do you know who I am if you are not careful you will spend the rest of your days typing your text in prison there are times you have to look at those things and understand that the people do not mean evil. They are just communicating their pain how they know. You who is wiser, show it by your maturity. Are we together now? So sometimes I look at it and then a few times I can, when I have the time, I can call and I say, okay, what is the problem? And the same person who was rambling and shouting, ah, sir, you called me. And I said, that's not the issue. So what do I, and he said, look, my life, I don't, and so I said, so why did you say it was an emergency? I just wanted your attention. And I said, let's pray. God bless you. That person you see may later become the greatest promoter of your teachings because of that encounter. But it took forbearance. Are we together now? When someone points his hand and insults you and you insult him back, you have shown that two of you are the same. When someone insults you and you can look at him, let me tell you this. Many times it is better to be kind than to be right. Kindness is better than correctness. You never go wrong being kind. There are times you have to choose kindness. Number two, when God gives you an opportunity, listen and learn. I hope everyone is learning. When God gives you an opportunity and grants you access and you can shelve away that access and not use it against anyone so that people can be blessed, you have demonstrated profound spiritual maturity. An example is Jesus. He could have called 10,000 angels. One call from Jesus and angels who come to the earth that were more than the men and 
it was only one angel that used hailstone and killed about 150,000 people in one night. Imagine if he calls 1,000 angels. We're all dead. And yet he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And he went. Jesus, naked, he was on his way going. And you could imagine the people who were healed from his crusades. So you are a fake man. Where is now the power? Can't you throw them away? And he held, and it was love that moved him. He was more interested in a bigger cause than he was proving that he was powerful. When the mighty do not use their might, it is not weakness. It is great strength. Great strength great strength when he hung upon that cross and he was watching the people he created insulting him let him die let his blood be upon us they even released a criminal and took your jesus and my jesus to the cross and when he hung there ladies and gentlemen hear what jesus said and learn from it with the pain of the nails with his body bleeding. Here's what he said. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. How could you advocate forgiveness to someone who is not even repentant? Jesus was on that cross. He had the power to say, Father, the moment I die, let everyone who is alive die. Who create men afresh. But he stood there. There are times when you will have every kind of power, but God will prohibit you from using it. So that you will create something that can outlive you. He hung upon that cross. You laid aside your majesty. You gave up everything for me. Suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign, heaven and earth exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me, gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. Hear me. Fear people who are weak because it was weakness that killed strength on the cross. The moment you see people who are weak, they are strong. Because the strength of God does not look for strength. It looks for weakness. Paul taught us that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. We are going to pray tonight as a nation. When I say nation, I mean a people group. We are going to pray tonight. And ask the Lord to unite the Tarok land. Now please look up. I want to do something very prophetic here. I stand here as a man of God. And I believe with all my heart that God has sent me not only to preach and to heal. But also to be a bridge of unity. Please hear me. I'm saying this to every family Every clan of the five chiefdoms, every politician, every man of God, every elder statesman, every mother, every father, every sister in the Tarok land who has been offended by someone on their behalf. I'm bowing down on my knees and I'm saying it is time to forgive. And it is time to let go. All the chiefdoms, it doesn't matter how old the story is. Whoever it is, I am telling you that it is time for this state. It is time for this nation to go forward. 
so i have come as an advocate of unity that united we stand i don't care who did what a man of god offended another pastor this one did not call me reverend pastor another politician said no i don't care all that one one thing for sure is that we will only stand when we are united so i am lending my voice with jesus and everyone who means this nation well to bow down openly before the whole world to go on my knees and say our elder statesmen our royal council our politicians our lecturers our pastors everybody who has been offended or aggrieved in the tarot land it does not matter the story behind it it does not matter how long i'm sure that some of those grievances maybe over clans happened even before i was born listen to me we look like our parents when we are born but we look like our decisions when we die we cannot afford to allow this time to fail mama it's time to forgive your son baba it's time to forgive your son pastor it's time to forgive your members politicians it's time to stop all this fight and let us come together and that god will help us so i am kneeling down on behalf of everyone at all whether you are here or in any nation of the world dead or alive who has been aggrieved in one way or the other whether it was caused by a tarok man or caused by a non-tarok man it does not matter it is important for us to know that one day if christ tarries we will all follow the way of death and hear me when you die it does not matter who you are it does not matter what you know if christ tarries one day this man you see kneeling before you people will come and gather like this and push you in the grave and that is the end of it for the sake of our children born and unborn let's give birth to our children and let this be part of the history too that one day the tarot nation came together to shelve every difference in truth not politically here on this crusade ground this is my proposition and in the name of jesus by the privilege of ministry for the sake of those who have died those who are alive for the sake of those who brought the gospel to this nation it's time for us to bury all these differences and move forward in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit I want to make an altar call tonight i may not even have the time really to just pray for the sick our time is gone i do not intend to keep us unnecessarily long but i want to make an altar call please listen to me my dear people hear me if you ever aspire greatness greatness happens beyond the realm of education beyond the realm of having a blessed family it takes Jesus. Please take it high for me. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other Jesus is the way We are who we are today Not just because of education Not just because of intelligence Not just because of connection We are here because of Jesus 
a day came in my life when I handed over everything to Jesus and look what is made out of this life listen to me dear people this is one last time this night the Spirit of God is about to make a call the greatest demonstration of unity is to be reconciled back to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith now please hear me I don't just want you to run out as a ceremony there are people who have given their lives to Christ from the altar call day before yesterday there are others who came yesterday but there are people in this place who are saying apostle when you made that altar call I was here but for some reason I did not feel a need to come out but I know that I need Jesus there are other people who are saying apostle as at the time you made the altar call I was not at the program now I am here and I've seen for myself that Jesus is alive and that he wants to do great and mighty things in my life can I tell you this no matter how far you have gone he can give you a new beginning the prodigal son left his father and the Bible says he went to feed with swine and one night he came to himself like many people are going to come to themselves tonight and he said how many hired servants has my father and I am here feeding with swine he said I will arise and I will go to my father and when I get to him I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven I am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants and the Bible says when the father saw him afar off coming he ran and kissed him and embraced him because when you run to Jesus he will never leave you comfortless he will come to you hear me I believe that there is an apostle and evangelist a pastor in the making who needs to make his way right apostle you do not know how bad I have been I've been a thief I've been an armed robber I've been a bad person I've done every evil you know to do I've caused pain for people Jesus can give you a new beginning today apostle you do not know the kind of addictions that I've suffered there is nothing evil that I've not done Jesus can give you a new beginning today apostle you do not know I've been involved in witchcraft and occultism and all kinds of diabolic demonic activities can Jesus save me absolutely that's why he brought us here apostle I don't think that I have a future and a hope I'm not I don't even like church I hate pastors I hate everything about Jesus but now that I've heard you I want to give him a chance will he accept me yes sir I'm going to count one to five and please listen to me do not just run out of this place emotionally but for those who are saying apostle I truly need Jesus I believe there are some bold young men who are saying I am tired of this kind of life I am tired there must come a time in a man's life where you make up your mind it was Dr. Panam that sang and said there comes a time in everybody's life where you must choose who to follow who you believe in and he says I have made up my mind that I will follow Jesus and right now I want to give you an opportunity one last time it is not by force you can choose to sit back and say it does not matter nice preacher let's share the grace and leave this place but I believe that Jesus sent me to this land for one person and even if it is only one person left to be saved we must insist that you be saved I will count one to five and I want you to run and come and stand here if you are making this decision for Jesus young and old no matter how old no matter how young no matter what religion you want to give Jesus a chance here is your opportunity as I count one to five come and stand here with genuine repentance and brokenness are you ready let's celebrate them as they come please if the children don't know what they are doing just keep them there let's be very serious so that we can have space one come on Tarot Nation is this how you celebrate salvation Oh, 
komina na kane komina na kane komina na kane ya yesu komina na kane yeshua hamashia komina na kane yeshua hamashia komina na kane komina na kane Yeshua Hamashia Komina Nakane Yeshua Hamashia Komina Nakane Are you still coming? Apostle, I remember giving my life to Jesus in a crusade or in a church. But as it is, my life has gone haywire. I cannot truly say I'm a Christian. Join them. Join them very quickly and I pray for you. Apostle, I'm not even sure. I'm not sure I'm saved. I just know I've been around church. I've been around pastors. Join them this night. Young and old. All together. Yeshua, I salute every one of you for coming out here. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, parents, uncles, aunties. Thank you for making this decision. My Bible says that everyone who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. We have come before the God of heaven. You have come before Jesus, even the mediator of the new covenant. Here's what I want you to do. Please, would you lift your right hand high above your head as we pray this prayer. There used to be an old song. Jiaduata Ya Yesu Bariku kata kazo tarenda kada kabo ye mani fustarima aloka shinda na kenda moa chia duata ya Yesu bariku kata kazo tarenda kada kabo ye Listen, let me tell you the implication of coming out for an altar call. When you come out for an altar call, it means you are acknowledging, number one, that you cannot help yourself by your strength. Number two, is an admittance that you are ready to leave your old life and begin a new life and graced by the power of Jesus Christ. Number three, when you come out for an altar call, it means you are making a declaration that at the end of this life, you want to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. This is the implication of your coming out. And if you really mean it, then lift your right hand and say this after me. Very loud, very clear to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I know that you are the Son of God. I declare that I cannot help myself. And I ask you to save me, to help me, to wash me with your precious blood. 
I receive forgiveness of sin. And I declare from today and forever that you are my Savior. You are my Lord. You are my King. I declare that the power of sin, the power of Satan, the power of hell, and the power of the grave is broken over my life. From this night, I am a child of God. From this night, I receive eternal life. I go forward ever and backward never. I am a Christian. I am a child of God. Amen and amen. Now let me pray for you, please. Father, thank you so much for these dear people. I thank you for the conviction of the Spirit to have brought them out tonight on this last night. I ask that based on their declarations that you honor their faith and by the authority of Scripture I declare that they are recipients of eternal life. From tonight, I decree and declare that you walk in the newness of life. You receive tonight the abundance of grace and even the gift of righteousness. I declare that the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Here's what I want you to do. The counselors are waving their hands. Look up, please, all of you in front here. Thank you so much. The counselors are waving their hands. I want you to please walk very, very fast, as fast as you can towards my right my left which is your right walk up to them very quickly you have said bye bye to satan nina yesu ne bazankoma bazankoma baya ba nina yesu ne bazankoma bazankoma baya ba nasa hanuna akanke Hallelujah. Please attend to them very quickly. We are going to pray. And then when we pray, I promised you yesterday that we are going to pray on your request. How many of you brought your request? Wave it to Jesus. Let me see it. Oh, you've submitted. How many of you are yet to submit your request? Wave it. Let's see. Now, here's what I want you to do. Please, let's have volunteers. Just pass it to anybody you can see. Please, ushers, if we can do well. I see at the minister's stand there are people who have their request. Someone, please collect it very quickly. Whether you are an usher or not, right to the back. Har Awuje. Those, if you have your prayer request and it's not submitted yet, please, very quickly. Very quickly. Let's have it because we're about to pray. We're about to pray. There was a song that a lady sang in Tarok yesterday after the service. Who was it? Can you sing that song for us? I hope my people will know. If they don't know, 
Okay, let, let someone. I want her to sing that song while we prepare to receive. Yes, even if it's to excuse them for a while, it's late. Okay. Are we together? So they're going to sing that song and we'll celebrate Jesus for two to three minutes while you are receiving the prayer requests. And in case you've not written one and you want to quickly write one, go ahead. We have a minute or two for you. Very quickly, please. We want to pray and then we'll declare over the land. Yes, please. Go ahead. Ah, yes, Oh, yes, Ah, yes, Mabula Wang Wang Li. Ah, yes, Oh, yes, Ah, yes, Mabula Wang. Ah, yes,
you to bring your prayer request like this because it is the most accurate representation of your desires. The Bible says, Mark chapter 11 and verse 24. Please, if you are still running with the request, just bring it quickly. We are about to pray. Mark chapter 11 and verse 24. Jesus himself was speaking and he said, what things soever ye desire, he says, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it. How many of us believe in the power of prayer? Wave it to Jesus. Let him see that you believe in the power of prayer. Please, very quickly, we're about to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, hear us from heaven, forgive our sins, we pray. One more time. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be Our Father, hear us from heaven. Forgive our sins, we pray. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to stretch your hands towards me as an act of faith while we pray. You don't have to kneel. Let me do the kneeling. In the presence of our fathers of faith, our elders, and God's people, I want to bow my knees like Paul would say in Ephesians chapter 1. And I want to agree with you. Only God knows what is written here. For some of you, written here are death sentences. Court cases. Difficult situations that only the power of God can step in. Oh, but there is, there is a name that is above every other name. So I want to pray. I want you to just stretch your hands by faith. And in one minute, while you are stretching your hands, begin to talk to Jesus. That these Egyptians that I see today, I will see them no more forever. Is someone praying? Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Lord, this family issue, this financial issue, this health challenge, This yoke of untimely death over my family, it must be broken. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray.
name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. There are two or three more things that will be done. And then I'm done for the night. I wish I had the time to tell you my story. Many years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared unto me. And when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, in that encounter that I had with you, I was in a room, how he entered, I do not know. Whether he entered through the door, whether he entered through the wall, I just know that he came. Majestic beauty. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume. His awesome presence fills this place. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills this room. And when he entered, majestic splendor, I was looking at him, the one who preachers talk about, the one we call Jesus. Listen to me. When I saw Jesus, I understood what happened to Isaiah. Ah. Soon answer, yes. One day I feed you can soon I soon answer. Yes. One day I feed you can soon I soon answer. Listen, the strange thing that happened in that vision was that he was not talking to me. He was not speaking and yet he was talking. That was when I learned that you do not have to speak to talk. I was hearing what he was saying and yet he was not talking and he stretched his right hand towards me that's the miracle light that is brighter than the sun came into my being many of you have listened to my teachings and you hear me say that how I did not die is a mystery and listen to me when he stretched and that light entered me. That was what changed my life. The next time I opened my Bible, I understood things I never read. It was like they drew a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible says, The entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding. The vision that brought me into ministry was a very strange vision. I was standing in an elevated altitude like a room upstairs and facing a sea side and all of a sudden I saw an endless sea of people and in that vision I understood it to be a whole generation and they looked at me and they were crying and they said there's no food and no water and I told them who is the cause of this and they pointed they said you are the one I said no I would never be this wicked and I said I was running out to come and rescue that generation but I remember there were some vicious people who were pursuing me but then I made up my mind that if I perished I perished that I was going to go out as soon as I opened the door there was a giant gray bearded looking man now I know it's the Holy Spirit he stretched his hand and said, come, I will hold your hands. Let's go together. And he held my tiny looking hands. 
He will not suffer my food to eat. Carry your presence everywhere. Well, your mind, your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. Very ordinary man. Held by a mighty God. And he held my hands. And he said let's walk. And then we began to cross from sea to sea. From place to place. So for everything you. You see today. Behind this frail man you see kneeling before you. Is a mighty God. Mighty, mighty God. I'm bowing my knees to pray, not because there is anything special about me, but believe me when I tell you, behind this man that kneels before you is a mighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. I want to pray for you, and I want you to believe in the declarations that will be made here. Because many of you will be surprised. You will marvel and wonder at the things that begin to happen to your life at the instance of this prayer. Do you believe this? Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I bow my knees before your people, before the kings and nobles, the elders and the fathers and in the name that is above all names even as you have anointed and sent me I decree and declare every prayer request written here let it be turned into a testimony now let it be turned into a testimony now let it be turned into a testimony now In the name of Jesus Christ. Every, every Egyptian that you have seen thus far, I decree and declare by the mantle and the mandate of Jesus that the Egyptians you see today, you will see them in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone here appointed unto death. We speak to the spirit of death and we speak to the grave. Oh, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? We call upon the name of he who is the resurrection and the life. And we declare no one will die prematurely in the name of Jesus. Every evil represented here that is connected to ancestry Connected to the spirits of the dead. Connected to foundations and demonic patterns. I and rams. And in the name of Jesus Christ who died, I decree and declare those, those altars and those yokes are broken right now. Broken right now in the, in the name of Jesus Christ you hear me every human agent who must be in partnership with heaven for this request to come to pass 
by the power of the prophetic, I prophesy to the north, I prophesy to the east, I prophesy to the south and the west, everywhere the help helpers of your destiny are, who must show up to see to it that God's faithfulness is demonstrated in your life. I call them by prophecy into your life now in the name of Jesus Christ by the power that is in the name of Jesus I shift systems and structures to make sure that this requests are answered in the name of prayer request everything that has risen above your head I bring it under your feet right now in Jesus' name. Everything that has risen above you, every problem, every pain, every challenge, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I now listen, listen very carefully. I'm wrapping up. I want to pray and speak over your life. Son of man, can these bones live? He, he took me in the spirit, Ezekiel 37, and said, and he took me to a valley that was full of dry bones. And the Bible says they were very dry. They had been there a long time. And he said, son of man, can this marriage live again? Son of man, can this ministry live again? Son of man, can the Tarok nation live? Prophesy to the four winds, the dry bones, and say, oh dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. I want us to, to agree in faith. As I speak over your life and speak over every dry bone. Because under a certain condition, everything can hear. And when God speaks, everything listens. Everything. Failure listens. Failure listens. Defeat listens. You have taken all my pain. You've taken all my shame. You've taken all limitations. You've taken all, all the sorrow. You have taken all the sadness. You've taken all the shame. Taking all disappointments, you've taken all the pain you, you have made them yours. The highest praise to the king you have made them yours. The highest praise to the king, he is taking all your pain. He's taking all your shame. He's taking all limitations. He's taking all the sorrow. He's taking all the sadness. He's taking all the pain you have made. Them yours. I just praise to the King. We give you worship. Worship. The highest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship, worship. The highest praise to the King. 
You've taken all my pain. You've taken all my shame. You've taken all the tears. You've taken all the sorrow. You have made that me yours. Highest praise to the King. In the name that is above all names, I speak prophetically and I declare over you every door that has been closed over your life, over your family, over your children, over your job. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare over that door. Be open right now in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Doors of opportunities. Be open in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, where thou had been forsaken so that no man passes through you. I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I decree and declare, every family here that has been called Ichabod, that the glory of God has departed from you. I stand by the apostolic and the prophetic. Let there be a restoration of your honor, your glory, and your dignity. Your honor, your glory, and your dignity to every home, every family, every clan. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. The Bible says the mother bore him in sorrow and she called him Jabez. But a time came when Jabez prayed a prayer and he says, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my tent. I pray for you. Anyone carrying a negative name that has become a cost to your life, a cost to your family, a cost to your clan, prophetically and by the Spirit. I decree and declare, the same way the story of Jabez was changed, may your story change now in the name of Jesus. Hear me? Samson was a man who was a great and mighty warrior. But for some reason, he gave in to all kinds of things. He lost his hair, which was a symbol of his strength and glory. He lost his eyes, which was a symbol of his vision. And yet, when they brought Samson and put him between two walls, and they began to mock the God of Israel, Samson prayed a prayer and said, Lord, one last time. All of a sudden, the strength of Samson returned. I want to pray for someone who had risen to a height. And for whatever reason, you went down. There are families that have risen to certain heights and yet went down. God is a God of restoration. My God says, and I will restore the years. I want to prophesy over you. Everything that has left your life. Every dimension of glory you used to enjoy. Listen, believe what I'm saying. I'm speaking as one sent of God. In the name of Jesus, every glory that has departed from your life. Tonight, I call upon the God of my covenant. Let there be a restoration for you. Let there be a restoration for you. Let there be a restoration for you. Listen to me. Honor is a mantle. You can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is conferred upon you by another. When the honor of the Spirit is upon your life, then a generation will hearken to you. Men will not listen to you just because you have something to say. No, there is a grace of honor. And he said, Thou shalt 
anoint Joshua the son of Nun. You shall call him in whom is the spirit and thou shalt anoint him. He says thou shalt take some of your honor and you shall give to him. I want to pray for that grace. Listen. I don't stand to insult your pedigree. But this man standing before you, I know what it means to be honored. I have stood before kings and nobles. God has given me the prayer request of my contemporaries in many lifetimes together. I know what it means to be honored. When he sends a word to Jacob, it is for the sake of Israel. Therefore, by the privilege of that grace, I stretch my hands over everyone here. In the name that is above all names, may this mantle of honor that God has so graciously given, I pray for you from the depth of my heart and by the Spirit, may that grace come upon your life right now. May that grace come upon your ministry right now. May that grace come upon your family right now. In the name of Jesus. By this prayer and by this impartation, I decree and declare shame and reproach of all sorts. Let it be far from your life and destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your heads. O ye gates over the Tarok land. Lift up your heads, ancient doors. I come in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. Every altar, every enchantment, every agreement with the spirits of the dead, every covenant with the elements of nature, the sun, the moon, the earth, the waters, the sea. In the name of him who died and rose again, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. Let that covenant be nullified tonight. Let that covenant be nullified this moment. Let that covenant be nullified tonight. And in the name of Jesus, we lift up a new banner over the Tarot nation. Jesus as King of Kings, Jesus as Lord of Lords, Jesus as the Captain of our salvation, Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Our children and our children's children will serve the God of the Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I decree and declare, let there be massive developments in the Tarok land. We attract the presence of captains of industry by prophecy. We attract development. Investors, we call you by prophecy. Academicians, we call you by prophecy. We attract the attention of the government at the local level, at the state level, in the name of Jesus, at the national level. We attract the attention of foreign investors. Look upon our land with kindness. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree that there will never come a time in the Tarok land where there are no men of influence. There will continually be men of power, men of influence, men of grace, men of capacity, men who have a voice. In the name of Jesus, right from this land, the Lord will spread us across the nations of Africa, across the nations in Europe, in America, Asia, in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over the earth of Tarok land. O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Begin to produce at an extraordinary dimension. I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I speak to the farms. I speak to the earth. I speak to the weather. Begin to bring rain on time in this land i prophesy by the apostolic that when it is 
time for rain. There will be no delay. Rain comes according to the ordinances of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. people across board in the name of Jesus we call that spirit by name the fourth rider upon a pale horse he, his name is death we call you by your, your name and we curse you by the God of heaven men will begin to live in hundreds before they die in the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.